This breakup was inevitable. Like a millennial saying words they don't understand but heard one time on TikTok. Now wait, who wrote this? Ah, three Gen Xers. Makes sense, I guess. Seriously though, the story surrounds flashbacks to 1993, has constant music from the era, stars the real Zach Morris, and Justin Long. Looks like there's something for everybody, huh? If you've been following this channel for any length of time, you know that like pretty much everyone my age, I grew up as a fan of R.L. Stein's Goosebumps. The books, the show, it was everywhere throughout the 90s and early aughts. It's also continued on with a pair of movies starring Jack Black. Well, one of them anyway. While I enjoyed that first film from 2015 in the style of the Robin Williams Jumanji movie, it wasn't exactly what most fans may have been expecting. After three seasons of a rebooted Are You Afraid of the Dark over at Nickelodeon, Sony decided to try their luck at a more serious take on Stein's material with the Disney Plus slash Hulu streaming series simply titled Goosebumps. They still don't have the top hook on the G, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. Although I would have appreciated at least the opening piano bit from the original theme song. I was looking forward to checking this out since it was announced many months ago. Actually, I did forget about it for quite a while until that first trailer was released, but it looked interesting. Not exactly an anthology, but things seemed to be leaning more towards the scare that always followed Readers Beware. I caught up on the first six episodes to hit streaming, and overall, I like this show. It would be easy to complain about certain aspects, and I could totally understand fans' frustrations concerning elements within it. But so far, I think this has done an admirable job of paying homage to the stories that started it all while tying in its own mystery and modern-ish vibe. I've seen people compare this to Riverdale with how they lean heavily on the paranormal high school drama of it all. Yeah, I get that. Yet, there's enough interesting stuff happening from episode to episode where I find myself increasingly invested in the story of this town, the mystery of this kid's death from 1993, 1993 time. <laughs> and most of the characters, so it hasn't bothered me much. Yet. If they weren't going to do individual stories, bringing everything together the way they're doing it is pretty clever. Every episode is titled after a classic Goosebumps story or phrase. We still get the gist of that tale, but it affects a different character each time, as we get to know them better, while the background of the overarching story also plays out. I hated him at first, but my favorite character so far has to be Lucas. Go Eat Worms isn't one of my preferred installments of the original series, but here, they give it some real depth. It's sort of like a twisted superhero origin story that culminates in some fantastic characterization for this guy. And I'm totally on board with him and Margot. The drama's working on me, man. I don't know what to tell you. Say Cheese and Die is a decent first episode. The Haunted Mask isn't close to how memorable the 1995 version was, but it was still serviceable, and there are scenes where it felt like classic goosebumps. The Cuckoo Clock of Doom is the one I was least into since it just got weird for weird's sake. The concept is handled so much better in the 95 installment. Plus, the end of that episode always freaked me out since my birth year was the one missing from the clock in the last scene. Reader Beware advanced the overall story very well with some background on the 93 mystery, progressing into the latest episode as of the posting of this video, Night of the Living Dummy. I was so into that one. Best of the bunch. This could be a bit of an issue, though. When you have a backstory that interesting, you run the risk of making your main characters and main plot look inferior by comparison. I know it's all directly tied in, but I found myself wanting more of Harold and the parents' high school story than their contemporaries. It's kind of a similar issue I had with Isaiah's backstory in The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. The stuff with Slappy just felt great. I love the backstory of Harold's great-grandfather and the dummy's influence over him throughout his life. How it's shot, the tone, the acting, it really felt like that could have been its own missing installment of the 95 series. In terms of scares, they go pretty far for the franchise in a few scenes, showing stuff that's still a PG-13 level of pushing the envelope, but I give them some credit for going further than I was expecting initially. There are definitely flaws here, but they're not difficult to look past. Enough is working to have me on this show's side, and I am very interested to see how they wrap things up with the last four episodes. If you guys want weekly reviews or to just plot my thoughts on here after the season has concluded, please leave a comment and let me know. Also, tell me what you think of this series so far. Good? Bad? Indifferent? 
Finally, I feel extremely stereotypical asking for this, but if you haven't noticed, I've been posting more often on this channel and I'd like to continue. Leaving a like on this video and any of the others you enjoy would be greatly appreciated so we can grow this thing together. Alright, I'm out of here. Go give yourself some goosebumps.